With the pandemic currently forcing a lot of people to either work from home or do distance learning, essentially school from home, you may be wondering how to make your camera quality look better. Those cheap little webcams built into laptops or just a cheap little webcam off of Amazon or eBay or anything like that, uh, they don't really cut it and they don't really look good. So I'm going to show you guys today how to use a real camera like a mirrorless or a DSLR as a webcam. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and you're into computer tech, hardware, PC gaming, tutorials, streamer tips, all that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button, don't miss a single upload. And uh, well, with that out of the way, let's get to the video. So there aren't a lot of high quality USB webcams to choose from out there that really make your streams, web conferencing, distance learning conferencing, or any of that stuff look all that great. I mean, you can make them look pretty acceptable. I started out with the C920 and I still use it occasionally for stuff, but realistically to make your streams, to make your video feed look as good as possible, you really need a real camera, being that a, a crop sensor, micro four thirds, or a full frame DSLR, one of the mirrorless cameras or a DSLR, uh, anything with a clean HDMI output can do what you need it to do. But you also need something known as a capture card. Now I've got two capture cards right here. This is the August VGB 500 and this is the Avermedia Live Gamer Mini. And I've reviewed both these capture cards using with a actual camera uh, on the channel. So make sure you, you check the description down below for links to those videos. So using one of these USB 3.0 capture cards, I actually have a Sony Alpha A5100 camera being used as my main camera. That's my main webcam right now. It has interchangeable lenses. It's a high quality Sony crop sensor camera and it looks great. It also isn't all that expensive. When you think of a real camera, you might be thinking something that costs probably a thousand dollars, six, seven, eight hundred, something like that. When realistically, especially if you consider eBay, you can get a camera combo like this for let's say the $300 range, which if you're looking at something like the cost of a Dogitech Brio or one of those kinds of cameras that being uh, nearly $200, uh, it sort of is justified, but the amount of quality that you'll get out of it is just leaps and bounds better. So let's go over to the desktop with my Sony A5100 and capture card already set up and show you guys how it looks. Another important key thing here is lighting, making sure you have decent lighting, but you don't need much. One good ring light or one decent ring light, one solid daylight colored light in front of you is really enough to get the job done. But yeah, let's get over to the desktop. We're gonna go over the camera and we're gonna go over the prices for it off of eBay, something to look at. So here we are in my streaming setup, which should demonstrate everything. Let's switch over to where the webcam would show. And here I am. So as you can see, this is pretty sharp. And uh, what's great about this camera is it has really good autofocus. So if you're moving around in frame, you're tracked and everything looks good and sharp. It doesn't look blurry or it isn't constantly breathing, looking for focus, uh, which can all affect the quality of your webcam. So if you're presenting, if you're a big presenter, uh, for something like this, you want your camera to work well and something with really good autofocus like the Sony a5100 definitely should be a camera out of consideration. So I only have one ring light. I'm using a nearer ring light, which is right over here. Or you'll see some B-roll of it right now. This ring light is really nice as one light really gets the job done for a lot of stuff. And um, but yeah, check the link down below. There are other ring lights as well. So if you wanted something more on a budget, make sure you look on Amazon. Definitely other choices other than this uh, $90 one. <laughs> So one way that you can test that your camera through the capture card will work as a webcam for video cam conferencing or whatever you're trying to do with it is going to like a web a webcam test site like this one. So I have multiple inputs right now. So let's see, this is video input two. test my cam. You get, want to give it permission to test your camera. See, that was the wrong camera. That's the C920 that's mounted above me. And there is the correct camera. So the computer does see, as you can see, the computer does detect it through the capture card, self-adjusted, look at that, looks sharp as heck. Definitely, this is a decent way to test. Now I have another way to test is if you open up your camera app on the computer, like assuming it's like Windows 10, 
right here see that's the c920 that i have back there but here we are on the capture card see now, the camera makes your camera look kind of weird but it is a way to test if your computer can detect a capture card with the camera with it then your programs can do so as well so an important thing when it comes to looking for a camera to use as a webcam is that it has clean hdmi out I'm just going to go ahead and recommend the Sony A5100 as the main camera to do this because it has both clean HDMI out and good autofocus. There are other relatively affordable cameras that, that, can, that can do the same job, but they don't have autofocus. The one that comes to mind is the Panasonic G7. You could also use handheld camcorders. A lot of them out there, like the Sony Vixia HF-S10. They do have clean HDMI out and it does work. However, their quality isn't as good as these cameras. So they may not necessarily be 100% in consideration, but it is an option if you look at them. For you guys, I'm talking the Sony A5100. Let's go on over to that scene. We're, let's search for Sony A5100. And uh, for here, since I'm in the US, I'm going to click uh, US only lowest price and buy it now so i changed it to accepts offers real quick because most of them that accept offers are also buy it now and it's really important to take advantage of that accept offers button so we're gonna look at this one right here sony a5100 black e-mount now this is uh looks like it's in pretty good shape yeah not bad 240 ish that's what it is on bid. You can make an offer, maybe offer them like 250, see if they'll take it. If we go back one and we see this one for 275, in my opinion, this is a little bit on the high end for one of these cameras, but mm, it's not bad. This one is also on make offer. So you know that you can get it for 275, so you can always drop an offer of 250 and see where that takes you. As you can see on screen right now, I got mine last August for $248. 248 bucks and eight dollars shipping so right around the 260 ish mark well like a little under 260 and you see here we have this one going for 275 try to offer like 260 try, it's free shipping so you'd end up getting around the same price i think that a seller like this would probably take 260 right now they say it works great some sign of wear but perfectly functional that's great that's what we're looking for and in case you run into any issues, you have the eBay buyer protection thing to, to keep you safe. Make sure that your money doesn't go to waste. Now we have a lens that we can actually suggest to use with this one. And that would be the Sony, uh, let's see, 16 millimeter F 2.8 E-mount. This is a crop sensor lens specifically for the, a, the, the crop sensor series of the Sony camera. So you put this camera on the, the higher end one, like the Sony Alpha 3 you're going to have like a circle like vignetting on going on with it it won't look right this is meant for the smaller cameras like the a5000 and a6000 series cameras so we're going to do buy it now let's see here lowest price and then we're going to go down here for us only uh there it is and what do we get 118.99 so this is about the price that i've seen i've actually seen them go for a little bit lower but 118.99 119 about 120 bucks for this lens is solid so if we're gonna look at that 120 plus 375 which is what the seller wanted for the other camera 275 let's assume at worst case plus 120 is 395 so a little over what I thought originally, but if you use the uh, make offer button and looks doesn't look like these guys accept offers. So let's check that out. Actually, they do accept offers. So if you use best offer, like say on this one, $100, I think they might come back with an okay on that one. Uh, $100 for that one. And the other one, let's say 260. Then we have 260 plus 100. 360 so a little bit better but make sure you utilize that best offer button so you get the best value for your money so under 400 dollars you're going to have yourself a real camera setup with a really great lens great autofocus and all that but we're still missing one thing and that is the capture card so let's check amazon real quick and you'll see that we can find uh let's say the avermedia live gamer mini What's the Live Gamer Mini at right now? And doesn't appear to be in stock. Fantastic. 
Let's go with the tried and true Elgato Cam Link. And uh, let's see what that's costing right now. Also, apparently out of stock. Hmm, very interesting. Otherwise, it would have popped up right here. So, let me tell you guys something real quick. You see this 5899 capture card? One of these actually will work just fine. The I have a review of a cheap $55 Chinese graphics card that is very similar to this one, and they do the trick for getting your camera feed into it. So, you know, this is definitely worth trying. So, if you want to go with a cheap capture card, we're going to go from 360 on that low side plus, uh, what is that, $60, $59, so there you go, a capture card like this, I'll, I'll link some capture card choices down in the description below so you guys have more to look at than just the ones I'm showing you, but a capture card, that, that's the rule essentially, you need a capture card, you need a camera, and you need a camera lens, and one of these, and with all that, you'll be able to Skype zoom and stream if you're going to be doing all those things because plenty of people now are using zoom to work from home as well as skyping and a lot of those people like to play games and if you're watching this channel i bet you're one of them and so you could use that setup to also do streaming um and that's really where it's going to be greatest because you have a good setup for everything and so we're back on this camera right here. This is a Panasonic G85, which could also be used for these purposes. It's the big brother to the G7, and that is one of the cameras that are recommended if you don't need autofocus. Anyways, so like I talked about with all this, uh, if you watch TV as well, like The Walking Dead, I've noticed that there are a lot of shows, talk shows, things like that, are now starting to do like interviews with their guests from home. And uh, it actually surprises me that the host setups are so bad, the video is so bad, the audio is so bad. I mean, just listen to this clip of Chris Hardwick from Talking Dead. Ron, what was your reaction to the way Beta was handling Alpha's death? I really thought he was going to keep the live head with him forever as some kind of a, a god or a totem or something. What was your reaction? Oh, he is not handling that death well at all. Yeah, uh, this is on a big TV channel, and they're sitting here doing their at-home streams to the TV shows, essentially. I mean, sure, they're recorded and all that, but they're doing it streamer style, and it looks worse than the majority of streamers that are out there trying to make it in, the, in today's world. So that's a little on the frustrating side for me. I'm watching that stuff going, man, this could be so much better. And the companies that fund these guys could send them probably what costs nothing to them as far as equipment to make everything look good and just look better, more presentable for TV. So that's another way that this applies to work from home. So work from home, distance learning, Zoom video conferencing, video conferencing in general, or game streaming. I hope this information was useful to all you guys. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to talk with you guys about any recommendations. Join our Discord. We can talk more and at length there. And uh, yeah, hope you're all being safe out there and hope all your families and everybody is doing as good as they can be given all this. Anyways, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure you check out our other videos linked right over here that are on other capture cards and stream setups and all sorts of stuff that we talk about. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I've been your computer technician. But yeah, click one of these, click it, click it. They're right here. You got more videos to check out on this topic, and they're right over here. Mm-hmm.